Alright guys, this is Jordan with Team Brotherhood here and I'm doing deck of the week number 11. This week's deck is Tour Guide Plants. With the release of Exceed Monsters, I find this deck to be really popular as well as really competitive. You can be more you can be more aggro than you can be defensive and that's what you're looking for right now. With the format almost over, you want a deck that's going to make an impact and teach you how to use the Exceeds. So, start off. Three Tangus. And with the TCG ruling on Tangu, this card's pretty nuts. If you get a rank, if you make a rank four like Roach or Utopia with the Tangu and something else, when you pop off Tangu, Tangu's effect's going to go off, and you're going to get another Tangu. So keep that in mind when you're using your Tangus. Make sure you use them not just for synchro spamming, but also for keeping your exceeds pumped and your field presence there. Three tour guide. I don't find this cloggy at all. With her hand, with her effect being from hand or deck, I think this is a very good option having three. She is a thousand attack, she's a dark, she's a level three that you can synchro with her, just not with the things she brings out. So you want to keep that in mind too, if they veil her at you, you still have some outs. On top of that, later on, there's some other cards you can combo her off with. Um, she is expensive, I realize this, but if you have three or you have two even, two, two is not bad, but you, you really want to run three if you can. Um, she instantly makes your any your Lever or Leviathan. She makes them right away. And the fact again with the R, R ruling, Sangin's effect's gonna go off and she grabs Sangin. And if you draw two in your opening hand or her and Sangin in your opening hand, you can still summon them both out and you can get your exceed on the field. Yeah, this is from hand or deck, so you're not really drawing bad. I've drawn three in my opening hand and still won the game. Let's keep that in mind, guys. Two Debris Dragon, it's a plant deck, you can't run plants without the Debris, so he's obviously in here. Basically because he can fetch pretty much anything from the graveyard, minus your Tangus, your Tour Guys, and your Sangin. So he's easily making Synchro Spam like the heart of this deck, so you want to keep two in here for sure. Two Effect Failure, well, the reason I do two Effect Failures, we have lots of mirror matches at our locals, lots of guys that need their effect upon summoning. Um, Kageki is still popular. We still have Sam's around here, so you definitely want to run two for me. Your locals might be different, so you might want to tweak this, but two for me for sure. Love this card. Lots of like lots of great opportunities with this card. Two Lone Fire. Now, if you ask me, this is the card to get hit on the ban list. It isn't the Debris Dragon. It isn't anything else. It should be Lone Fire down to one, and actually, I could live with Lone Fire staying at two if they hit the Synchro Bullshit he brings out. Like, not the Nanny, the Glow Up, the Spore, but I mean the actual Synchro Monsters, like Formula, Tech Genius, different things like that. I think those are where where the hitting needs to be, not here. But that's a personal opinion. Um, probably because I'm a plant player. But yeah, two Lone Fire, basically fetch and get, get your plant engine going, get the things you need in the graveyard when you need them. So, definitely, definitely run two. I'm meaning one Thunder King. There's lots of TG players on my locals. On top of that, Thunder King is just all around a good card. 1900 beater. Make it so you have to draw cards. Can't add cards from your deck to your hand. You get them out during against TGs and you protect them. You should win. Um, he's just all around a good card. I definitely would run at least one. Spore level one tuner that can become a level two or four in this deck, making it pretty much versatile. He's key to the plan engine, so you definitely got to run one spore. Also gets hollowed out in September. You know you don't want that. Just one breaker. I used to run two, but I took one out for the Thunder King. Um, lots of back row hate in this deck still with two MSTs, a giant grenade, so you're still hitting a lot of back row. Um, even though you're aggressive, again, breaker's not that bad of an option. So, Sangin, obvious reasons. Tour guides fetches him. He fetches everything else in the deck pretty much, minus your Tangu, your breaker, and your Thunder King. So, definitely going to run a Sangin. Spirit Reaper. Um, <laughs> If you have nothing to do or you need an out for a few turns to camp around, one Spirit Reaver does the job. Can't tell you how many times this guy saved my life and made it so I've come back to win the game. Definitely want to run a Spirit Reaver. Gores. Again, when you have no field, drop a big guy, get a token, anything like that to help protect your life to make field presence. Not searchable by Sangin, but I mean, he's a big beater. You gotta run the Gores. Glow Ball, Plant Engine, level 1 tuner that reoccurs himself. Dandelion, um, Dandelion, I mean, you can argue the fact that Dandelion should be banned. He's free advantage, but I think he's fine at one. I, again, probably because I'm a plant player, but yeah. 
definitely need to run a dandy line. I mean, he's a hard engine. I don't run a shooting star, but if you have a lone fire and a dandy on the field and you're clear, you can shooting star. So, and one cyber dragon. Now I'm running cyber dragon over chaos sorcerer, just for the fact that if I can drop cyber dragon whenever I don't have a monster on the field and get and get some extra field presence. Where chaos sorcerer, I do require things to be in my graveyard. So we definitely want to run the Cyber Dragon, in my opinion. So definitely want to run him over the Chaos Sorcerer. Now, I did test both. They both tested well. Um, obviously, if you use Chaos Sorcerer, you can use Levy or Levy Air Dragon, the Empty Space Dragon. You can definitely use him as well as some two Leviathans. But Cyber Dragon's kind of where it's at for me. Um, again, I don't run Commander Tech Fortress Dragon either. I have it side decked. I don't even have it really side decked. I don't have a side deck for you guys. But yeah, um, Cyber Dragon's where it's at for me. I really like this card. On to the spells. Obviously, two pot of average. Don't run three. It's clumpy. It's cloggy. You pretty much you pretty much only need to reoccur your tangus and your tour guides and different things once. So, only run two pot of average. You're good. Two STs for the back row eight. I mean, you clear away a warning. You clear away another warning. You clear away a judgment. You clear away a deep prison. I mean, this this is what's going to get you you hope and give you you know your strength to go in for the kill. One Foolish Burial, um, it's plant deck, dump whatever you need in the graveyard, glow up all, dandelion, spore, whatever you need at the time. I mean, Foolish Burial is just key in this deck. John Grenade, back row hate, clear, make the push. It's a good card to run. Obviously, if you smell gores, don't, don't swing into it. Enemy Controller, now this card has two options, two versatiles. You can pomp a Tangu, pomp a Dandy, pop a guy on your side of the field, a dead tour guide, and take their guy, or you can put their guy in defense mode, and I like that. I've considered running two, but I like Book of Moon too, because Book of Moon stops the synchro spam play of their debris, where Tangu, unless you have the tribute fodder, doesn't. And then I said Tangu, I mean, or enemy controller doesn't do that. So Book of Moon does that, that's why I'm running one and one. Some people run two and one, or two, or just one. I really think this is like the key combinations right here. Enemy controller is just way too good with the, with six seeds being out. You gotta run an enemy controller. Dark hole, nuke the field, get a fresh start from the monster perspective. One for one. If you got a tango on the field, a dandy in hand, I mean, just go for it. One for one's key sets up lots of plays. Um, I used to use gold circ to fetch this, but I just don't have the room anymore. I'm at 41 cards as it is, so. Monster Reborn, get a guy back. I mean, what can I say? You top deck this, sometimes you can win the game. Monster Reborn's key. Every deck should run a Monster Reborn, unless you're Grave Keepers. And Mind Control. This card is so good, it's not even funny. This card's stupid. Before you thought it was bad because you just take a tuner and sync with their tuner. Now what makes it really good is you take their face down, their face up, their level four, their tango, whatever you want, and you exceed with it as well. So instead of just being able to synchro, you can now exceed with that face up monster, making mind control an extremely good card. And I run one mind control and one enemy controller because this one's costless. So I keep the mind control, the enemy controllers for the set on their turn, making the play. And again, the mind control is for my turn. So this is why I'm running, another reason why I'm running just one enemy controller. I think mind control is key. So that's the spell lineup. On to the traps. For traps, we have two D prisons. I need more supers or an end common. So if you guys got any, send me a PM, comment on the video. Make sure you like the video too, but anyways. So D prisons, um, protecting your guys, getting rid of their big guys, getting rid of their star tired. I mean, D prisons just key. Running two is funny, hilarious actually, because somebody will hit a D prison and be like, oh, it's gone. Then surprise, another one pops out. So yeah, you really should be running two deep prisons. I, I love the card at two. Um, people argue, tell me to take it to one, and I just I can't do it. It's all it's helped me win so many games. Two warnings. Um, it's warning. I run a black horn in the side deck, which again I'm not showing you guys because it's mostly for my local area. But I mean, warning's good. Stops any type of special summon. So warning's where it's at. Make sure you run two. Mirror Force, extra back row hate, even though this guy gets MST'd a lot, it's not extra back row hate, extra field hate, field presence hate, so I mean, you gotta run the Mirror Force. 
Torrential, arguably one of the best trap cards. This format, clear an entire field when one guy's dropped. This can change the game for you in your favor very easy. Call the Haunted. Um, get a guy back. Get a guy back if they're trying to monster born the guy. Call the Haunted is pretty good. So, And Solemn Judgment. Pay half your life points to negate everything, but, in here, but it's a certain special summon pretty much. So can't go wrong with that. On to the extra deck. Making its debut this time, I put in a Steel Sworn Roach. And Roach is pretty good. This is a real Roach, by the way. Roach is pretty good. Um, my problem with Roach is he dies really easy. He's 1900 attack, zero defense, so they book him, he's dead. I mean, he's just going to get raffle stomped. So Roach is very situational when they have a way to actually... That was a fail of a card flip. When they have a way to actually make level four... Or rank four is a little more spammable. I think you'll see more play. But... I mean, you have other options like Utopia and stuff. I, I did get this effect off once, and that was good. That was cool. But the fact that he can't stop and exceed summon, it has to be level 5 or higher special, that's kind of making me not really want to run him. But he's a good card. Leviathan. Two Leviathan. The reason why I'm not running one Leviathan and one Levy is because I don't run a Chaos Sorcerer. I don't run a Caius. I don't remove anything. So I don't see the point. And Levy's only 1800. He's gonna die just as fast as this guy does. So Leviathan pumps himself to 25. You get priority on his effect, so you toss the Sang and you exceed with, and you get a search. So you can't go wrong with Leviathan, 2500 in opening. This guy is hilarious, and it happens a lot. You're running three tour guides. You can open that guy very often. On to the Synchros, it is still a plant deck, so we're running two Trulas Why we can, no doubt going to one this list. Um, obvious reasons, remove one, two, and three cards from different areas, so you definitely want to run Trishula, 2700 beater, easy to make with the Breeze. Stardust Dragon, not really going to explain much, it's a Stardust Dragon, you want him for protection, you want him for other reasons. Scrap Dragon, pop a dead card, pop their card, do whatever you need to clear the field, 2800 beat stick. Black Rose, one, only one, because you are not you don't want to nuke the field as much. I've had times where I've sworn and wanted a second one, but... I'm still iffy. I'll probably just run the one because one's good enough for me. One Ancient Fairy Dragon. It makes a wall pop the field card because Dragon is still running around my area. On top of that, you can special summon a level four. You can't conduct your battle phase, but if you want, you can exceed summon that turn with that level four. And making his debut also, Orient Dragon. Orient Dragon, as you see, is this week's card of the week as well. But Orient Dragon came out new to us in Generation 4. He's 2300 1000. People say he came out to replace this guy on this year's ban list. Or this month, the September's ban list. But I don't think that's the case. I think he was just an exclusive to give to the TCG players to sort of keep the synchro competitive vibe going. He's really good. Um, one of my teammates was playing down to Trish Shula. Um, the buddy was like, what are you going to do? You can't get over my Trish. Teammate dropped a Blizzard, grabbed a Boro, sunk into Orient Dragon, popped the Trish, attacked for game. So, I mean, he has he has his place, he has his moments. He's definitely a staple for over Iron Chain. Veronic, card's a staple. Discard your hand, pretty much clear the field if you think you can push for game. Two Librarian, drawing is crazy. You want to draw, you want to sync. You still synchro spam a lot, so running two of him is amazing. I think he's going to one on this ban list. He should be at one. He should be banned, in my opinion, but he should be at one for now because Konami want, or Shonen Jump wants to make their money off their subscription, so he should be on the, he should go to one this list. He's one of the cards I was saying about the plane engine. Shouldn't be touched if he goes to one. Same with formula. You can put formula to one and it wouldn't be that bad. Formula with a librarian to draw two. With two librarians to draw three. You can't go wrong. And then you could formula right there into a shooting quasar or into a halberd cannon. So I mean, the options are endless. You can use two of these. You can use formula into an Arcanite Magician. Your plays are endless with these. So yeah, two formula. So anyways, that's the deck guys. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up and like the video.